Welcome to Beyond the Title. This is Giovanni joining you live from Hong Kong. It's a pleasure to have you tune uh, into Insider's channel where we really go beyond the title. Uh, deep diving every Thursday uh, with leaders who come from different and diverse industries uh, around the globe. Uh, today we are accompanied by Laurent Gurel, all the way from France. Hi Laurent, ça va? Ça va et toi? <laughs> uh, very well. Uh, would you like to give uh, a little brief introduction about yourself? Yeah. So first, uh, thank you, Giovanni, for uh, inviting me uh, to this uh, to this chat. Uh, so my name is Laurent Burel. You you pronounce it uh, well. I'm turning 39 in few days. Uh, I live in Paris. I'm married. I have two young kids, and I recently joined Pernod Ricard as Group's Di digital marketing director. Uh, for those who don't know Pernod Ricard, it's the second largest wine and spirit company in the world. It's present in uh, 86 markets, uh, 20,000 employees, and distributing uh, uh, very iconic brands such, such as uh, Absolute, Chivas, uh, Havana Club, Jameson, or, or Ballantines, as examples. Fantastic. Exciting to have you here. And uh, I think we can go through some of the questions that uh, uh, will go behind, uh, beyond your title and uh, uh, we'll uh, get to know uh, you a bit better. So I will start with the first one, which is what's your Ikigai, which is uh, the reason you jump out of bed each and every morning. So thank you. I, I learned a new word. So uh, Ikigai, I will uh, take it with me. Uh, well, there, there are maybe two ways of answering that question. Literally, uh, every morning I, ju I, I jump out of bed because of my two young kids that are uh, waking me up, uh, either crying or requesting uh, uh, their baby bottle. So it's really why the, the real reason why I'm going uh, out of bed. But 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 if I, uh, I let's say more fundamentally, um, what motivates myself to go out of bed? It's when I know that I will have a very busy multitasking day. I, uh, I really like to jump from one subject to another, meeting uh, uh, different people. I'm not that kind of person, you know, uh, who, who, who likes to deep dive on, on, on problem for a whole day or week. I'm more a generalist, let's say, much more uh, uh, than an expert. This is the reason why I have chosen marketing, I guess, and, and this is the reason why I love uh, uh, marketing. Uh, because, you, for, for, for instance, in the same day, you can evaluate a creative, you can work on a new adver advertising tech, and, and you can discuss business performance. So uh, that's, uh, uh, that's a bit my icky guy. All right, great. So you're a generalist that wakes up in the morning because he likes to be challenged in many ways. And also because he has uh, two kids <laughs> to yeah. wake him up in the morning. <laughs> I, don't like, I don't like routine, so uh, I, I need to do uh, multiple uh, multiple tasks. All right, great. Uh, let me jump to the next question, which is what's um, uh, your movie character that represents you best and why? So it's a difficult question. I would say the Merovingian, you know, uh, also known as the Frenchman in the Matrix saga, uh, because, in a way I, because in a way I'm very French. Uh, I have a strong French accent, as you can hear, but also uh, many French st stereotypes apply to me. I love food, I love wine. We discussed it a, a bit before, cheese. I take three or four uh, weeks holidays during summer, which is very French. Uh, well, in, in fact, I enjoy the, 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 the French way of life. So um, it's true that after working for an American tech company uh, and joining a French company uh, like uh, Pernod Ricard, I'm really happy uh, and, and, and above all, a company that, which makes uh, wine and spirit that's perfect for me. Oh yeah, that's a great match, looks like it. <laughs> <laughs> and instead, um, we all know that in this period we have been working from home. So uh, my question to you is uh, what app you couldn't live without during this period and why? Uh, well, I, 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 I guess all the communications app, you know, uh, FaceTime, Teams, Zoom, Google Duo, uh, House Party, I, I, I experienced them all during the lockdown. I have to admit that was not the best moment of my life, the, 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 the lockdown, even if I stayed at home with my loved ones, with my wife and, and my two kids. But, but to be uh, really happy, I need to go outside. I need to meet people. I need to travel. I need to have new experiences, which was not really the case when you are uh, stuck at home. Um, that's why I compensated a bit with those apps uh, uh, during the lockdown. But on the positive note, I would say that thanks to those apps, I was able, able to... Uh, 
um, talk again to some old faraway friends. Uh, it was in a way uh, uh, an opportunity to reconnect with them. So, uh, so that was the positive uh, note in the, during this uh, this lockdown. I think yeah, we should all take uh, something um, out of this this period and reconnecting with old friends and old people that we have uh, haven't been in touch for a long time can be one of them. So very interesting uh, uh, answer. Um, and going uh, to another. Uh, of the topics I would like to touch base on is one advice that you would give to your 21-year-old self. What would you give? Uh, I, I think I would, I would, I would tell me, you know, uh, your, your career is going to be very long. Do not skip the steps. You know, try to consolidate your experience. Try to build on that. Uh, and, and when when possible, take a take take a step back. You know, and I remember when I started to work, um, I was always looking for the next step, for the next opportunity, for the promotion. I was really competed for for that, and I I, I, I I was really looking for more and more responsibilities. I, and and now I think I could have stayed a bit longer in in, in some jobs in, in some jobs. So sorry to learn more uh, and to grow more. Uh, and, and maybe uh, I would have gone quicker afterwards, you know. So you you, you have to be patient at the beginning of your career, and you have to learn a lot, and and, and you will see the acceleration of of your career will go will go after. So maybe this is also some of the advice that we can give to any uh, of our audience that in that age uh, tries to develop himself or herself, and we can we can say patient, be patient. Uh, there will be the time for you. So it's a marathon. It's a marathon, yeah. This is one of the motto also of our company. Uh, this is not a sprint; it's a marathon, and uh, we need to prepare for the long ride. So it's a great advice. Um, and uh, building on that, I would like to also ask you: What is the harshest feedback that you have ever received? Yeah, it was in my uh, in the in the first company I worked for. Uh, I, I received the feedback from a, from a, a top manager who, who said to me, uh, you know, Laurent, you're doing a good job. Uh, we're really happy about what you're doing, but I would like you to be more aggressive. I would, I, I, I would like you to show more your teeth. I would like you to be more at war. Uh, uh, so everyone knows you, everyone respects you. And, and this is the moment I realized that I was not aligned anymore with the, with the, with the culture. And that and, and and that meant the uh, the end of the story with this company. Um, in fact, I realized that I don't want to play a role to succeed. And and, and to be frank, uh, I think that several weeks after this feedback, I I, I quit the, the the company. So basically, it was almost an eye opening for you. Uh... Yeah, yeah. I think that uh, you know when you're young, you are very. Uh, maybe uh, manageable uh, uh, in a way agile and and then you concentrate on what you really want to do and who you are who you really are and and I knew that it was uh, it was the end of the story for me that's uh that's an interesting story uh, thanks for sharing with us and when it comes to leadership um, the biggest leadership challenge that you're facing uh, during this current period which is a different period from uh, any other in uh, in the history so uh, what would that be? Yeah, uh, I saw two two main challenges. First challenge was to maintain the the, the culture of the company. You know, when you're working from home, the the tagline of Pernod Ricard is a creator de conviviality, de conviviality, which means creator of friendliness, of proximity, and and it's it, it's a motto that is difficult to make uh, to make it live uh, only through uh, screens. Let's say. Uh, I, I really believe in physical interactions, informal talks, emotions also uh, when you are on, on, on the workplace and that participate a lot to the, to the company culture. So difficult to, to make a, the, 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 the culture of a company live uh, only through digital. Uh, and the second, uh, I would say, is, this is something I have experienced is to, um, to launch new innovative projects during this period. I think the work from home proved to be very efficient on uh, uh, when, when you deal with day-to-day -day, uh, work, something that you already know uh, how to do, but it's much more difficult when you need to a deep collaboration on the project, uh, when you need also those informal talks, uh, when you need to, uh, I don't know, a very strong collaboration. Uh, so 
one more time, I, I really believe that the workplace is uh, is fundamental for innovation. I think it's where in uh, those informal talks where people are brainstorming and even coming up with those crazy ideas where, you know, when you are in a chat on, on Zoom, um, probably you stick to what's secure and what is the topic of the day. Uh, it's difficult to go over the board and brainstorm yeah. on some other crazy ideas, right? And people yeah. try to stick to that plan and maybe not enough place for innovation in those talks. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. I think that's, you know, sometimes you need also uh, this physic instantaneity, physical interaction helps also to build, to be very innovative. I think it's, 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 it's all about human beings and it's the way we are, uh, we are made. So uh, plus you're right. Sometimes uh, when you are doing only uh, uh, calls on, uh, on Zoom or, 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 or videos, Yes, you, you 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 stick to the you stick to the to the subject only, and, and and you do not leave space enough for I don't know informal talks, creativity. Uh, uh, you are very very uh, let's say uh, focus on the topic. Yeah, and um, well, sticking to being focused. Uh, what are your predictions then for uh, these coming months and for this new world or digital world uh, 2.0? So. I, I'm not going to be very original on that one, but uh, I, I think we'll see a, a never seen before digital and e-commerce acceleration, but not only for companies that are already digital, but for uh, for for the most traditional industries. And Pernod Ricard is one, is, is one uh, and, and is the perfect example. And it's important to, to notice that uh, digital acceleration has been set up uh, as the number one priority by the top management. So uh, that's going to be the priority for the three coming years, uh, and and the top management is expecting a strong uh, a strong a strong tr transformation on that one. Um, it's interesting to see that as a, a FMCG company, um, we are mostly a, a disintermediate business, you know, with distribution. So we need to engage more uh, with directly with the consumers through media through uh, social conversation but or through but also through uh, um, d2c um, so um, in fact we want to own more and more the relationship uh, with our consumers and, and, and better and better know them and propose them better uh, experiences so I would say the challenge uh, is to digitize marketing for and this is my challenge and this is why I uh, I am uh, here for, but but not only marketing. Uh, it's at every level, every service of the company. So there are projects on HR, on finance, on sales. Uh, uh, it's a real challenge because uh, one more time we are in a in a traditional industry, but uh, uh, but, uh, but but I think we are uh, we are we are on our on our way to do to do so. So if I understand correctly, uh, you see this period as a catalyst for uh, digital transformation, where even big corporations that have this uh, historical heritage of being offline, then they need to jump uh, in online and this becomes top priority. And I think in the next two to three years, that will be uh, top priority also in terms of execution. And uh, when it comes to getting closer to the consumers, most of the companies, instead of focusing only on B2B, they need to start opening in B2C. And yeah. when it comes to B2C, it's a different ball game, right? Exactly, exactly. No, no, and, and that's true, distribution is very important, but we need also to own a bit more the relationship with the, the final consumer. Okay, that's great. Um, then, uh, in, moving on to actually the same topic, what are the uh, the changes that you think are here to stay? So, uh, I think two, two days ago, I, I read an article from uh, Brian Chesky, the, uh, the founder of Airbnb, who said, travel will never, ever go back the way it was. Uh, and he said, travel is, the, is for sure going to be more local. Uh, and less uh, plane, uh, plane based, and, and that has a, a, a transformation effect on the society, and that has a transformation effect also on our industry in Pernod Ricard, because you know travel retail, uh, duty free shops are are a sizable business for us, but we can imagine that it will suffer a lot. I don't know for how long. Uh, if we believe uh, Brancheski is forever. Uh, um, same thing with the business travelers, you know, we don't know what will happen with the business travel in, in hotels. And you know that many hotels, luxury hotels, um, they depend a lot on business travelers. So 
and, and we are distributing our product in uh, in those uh, hotels and we are distributing uh, uh, those products in uh, in in the airports so uh, I think that we will need also at some point to reinvent our, uh, ourselves. Uh, uh, I see a shift in the weight of distribution channels. Um, I think also we need to look at innovation when it comes to home consumptions. Maybe uh, people will stay a bit more at home or at least uh, uh, during that period. So we need to invent a new product, new service uh, for home delivery, for uh, co uh, homemade cocktails, things like this. So. You know, in every crisis, you have uh, you have new opportunities, and we need to seize them uh, uh, as a group. Yeah, so you're seeing this as an opportunity. Definitely, traveling is changing, and I was reading that business traveling is one of the largest chunk of uh, actually the revenue generated by traveling. So, if this is going to be uh, staying here with us, then we need to adapt uh, yeah. definitely to the changes. And it's true that we have realized that maybe sometimes we do not need to travel so much. You know, uh, it's good. Uh, one more time, I'm a strong believer of uh, human interactions. But, you know, sometimes you're making a, a lot of uh, kilometers and, and you go back home and you haven't signed anything. You haven't. It, it was just a talk that you could have uh, on, uh, uh, on, on, on the communication platform, for, 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 for instance. So maybe when it's very important, when you need conviviality, uh, let's do that, but but not for uh, every occasion. Yeah. So also, uh, somewhat is this uh, urge to also drive efficiency. So I think there would be a big of a balance in between efficiency and then conviviality. So yeah, I think that those two would go hand in hand. And what are your hopes for the future? Um, two main hopes. One that is very obvious for me. Uh, I, I wish a quick recovery from the uh, economic crisis we are entering into. Uh, I sadly I believe that we are entering in the most difficult part of the crisis. So uh, because um, because uh, this uh, this economic crisis is going to be very very hard for many people. So I, I hope that we will find all the resources and the the help from the governments to. Uh, to make that happen, to make the, the recovery happen. And what I wish also is maybe a bit more connection. Uh, and it has never been so clear than now that when uh, when it's uh, threatened, the, the, the civilization needs connection. And, 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 and we saw that through the, the, the apps I was speaking about. People, they were really looking for connection. We were we were speaking about physical distanciation, but, they, but I think that, or even social distanciation. But I think, in fact, people they really wanted during this period to be connected. So uh, I hope that um, digital will help to, to, to bring a bit more uh, uh, human beings together. Uh, uh, and, and I really think that digital could help. Uh, but one more time, it, it couldn't be the only solution. I, one more time, I'm a strong believer of uh, physical interactions. That sounds pretty clear. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. So I think another couple of questions on my side, and they are a bit of these unconventional questions. So the first one is one weird fact about you. So yeah. So it's a totally different topic, and and and, and let's be a bit uh, less serious. Um, so I think that is very weird is that when I walk, my ankles creak. You know. They, they, they creak or they crack. I don't know how you say that in English. But if you follow me, you can you can hear a strange click click coming from my uh, from my feet. And in fact, those are old ones uh, from a very intense years of uh, of sports because I was doing a lot of sports and and my ankle suffered a lot. Um, and 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 it it said a, a lot about me uh, because I'm a I'm a huge sports fan. Uh, I, I practice a lot running, boxing. That's why I. I uh, I, I gave you this photo of, uh, of myself boxing, boxing if, even if I'm not a good boxer, but I really enjoy it. So, so sport is a passion, uh, and, and it's a way for me to uh, to decompress, to energize myself, uh, uh, and uh, and this is really part of my uh, equilibrium. Are you more of a morning person for exercising, or afternoon, or evening person? <laughs> when my kid let me exercise. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you do not choose. And you know, during the one, you didn't have the choice in Paris. You were obliged to, if you were uh, going out for a run, it was either before 10 or after uh, 7 in the, uh, in the evening. So no choice. Uh, no choice. All right, all right. 
<laughs> okay, so very uh, last question. Um, what is your motto in life? Uh, one that I like is expect nothing, be prepared for everything. Um, I think that it is particularly uh, adapted to the COVID situation. Um, I don't know someone that was really expecting uh, what was uh, what it, what happened. Um, I think that we we couldn't have uh, forecasted it. Uh, neither the companies nor the individuals, and you need to stay very agile, uh, adapting to the new normal. Uh, I saw some companies even pivot, pivoting their uh, their business model. Um, and, and, and I like to apply that to my uh, everyday job. I think that uh, having a three uh, years vision in a, in digital, it's impossible. It doesn't mean it doesn't mean anything. You, there are innovation that you don't foresee. Um, so I try to stay uh, agile. I, I try to have maybe a six months plan or a six months vision. And, and, and uh, I don't hesitate to change priorities of the team if, uh, if needed. So adapt yourself to any situation and expect for the yeah. right yeah. to work, right? Be very agile. Uh, nothing is a given. Uh, and, 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 and I think it's, it's, it's um, maybe a good advice to succeed in digital. You need to be very curious. You need to be very agile. Uh, and uh, for those who like, uh, you know, uh, a long-term plan, maybe it's not the right thing to, to be in. Yeah, be courageous and be bold sometimes pays off as well. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much, Laurent, for your time. It was an interesting chat. And uh, I'll see you soon in the next episode. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Giovanni. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.